Final Cut for iPad was just released. In this video, I want to talk about the first impressions from a professional video editor myself. No more speculation, no more guessing, time to jump in and see what this is all about. All right, so as you can see, Final Cut for iPad, get, go ahead, download this for the very first time. I think the past couple of weeks, I've reset my expectations where, you know, yes, this probably isn't going to be a NLE you use to make the next blockbuster feature film, but especially for content creators, for up and coming creatives who are just getting into the hobby and profession, I think some of the features are going to blow those type of creators away. But I also wanna make sure for the existing professionals, I've had many people message me saying, hey, you know, I have a desktop, but I just bought a very expensive, you know, M1, M2, iPad Pro, and I would love to do on the go editing with the iPad. So can this still handle more complex and professional projects? All done downloading, open her up. Welcome to Final Cut for iPad. And while this is loading, I think it's a good time to tell you I will be creating a Final Cut for iPad course showing you all the ins and the outs. Uh, and it's going to actually come out in about a week. I've already had it all outlined, I got all the features, and now that I'm able to really dive into it and create all the content, um, but I'm going to give you guys a 25% off pre-sale price. So if you head to the link in the description and use the code down there, you get 25% off. I try to make my courses extremely affordable. I add to them over time based on your questions and recommendations. And I'm going to be giving three licenses away, three yearly Final Cut for iPad licenses away for the people who join in this first week of the course. So if you wanna potentially get the app for free, you can join the course and the community that we'll build over there. I already have a great community of over 500 people for my DaVinci Resolve course, so you should definitely check that out. But even with this, if you're a fan of DaVinci Resolve and uh, you wanna check out my course on that, I will be giving away a license to one of my members over there as well. So you can check both of those in the link in the description below. Appreciate you guys and super excited to build another community around another professional video editing app. So once you get past that screen, it looks like we start editing with a demo project. So while that's downloading, we can essentially get a lay of the land for the project setting here. So this is where we're going to manage all of our projects. Uh, they'll show up on the left-hand side here. Let's see, we can import projects, Final Cut for iPad project, iMovie. That'll be interesting. Can we share Final Cut for iPad projects amongst each other. So if I make something on my iPad and I want to send you something for your iPad, it seems like we'll be able to share projects that way. We'll jump into this demo project, but I just want to see what it looks like to create a new project. Name, timeline settings, if I put custom. It seems very much like Final Cut. They're very basic settings. Basically put in our resolution, orientation. All right, so that would create a new project. Cool. This project here, I'm going to hit edit. So seeing this makes me happy. I think loading the screen will bring joy to any Final Cut person who has been begging for this pretty much since the inception of the iPad almost. This makes me incredibly happy. All right, so we have our playhead at the top. I know a lot of people were asking like, can you do everything? So whether using a pencil, your finger, or whoop, two fingers, a trackpad, it's gonna be pretty easy to scrub around. A lot of people will ask too, you can indeed pinch to zoom, which that that is nice. I don't even know if I, can I do that in DaVinci Resolve? No, in uh, DaVinci Resolve, that does not work. You have to use the shortcut keys. So that's actually really nice that you can easily pinch and zoom. Does the shortcut, shortcuts work as well? So that's really, really cool. I like that. All right, so here's where we will import from. Now this was the big question, right? Is importing footage from other places. I believe my wife has stuff on her drive to edit. Yeah, so we got a bunch of random video files here. So let's see, can we import, if we go to files, go here, we can see the drive, select all my footage, just hit open, and there's the footage. Everyone was under the impression that you would not be able to access footage from an external drive. Uh, I have just demonstrated that that is not true. <laughs> Now, it may import that media into the project library. I guess the real test of that is if I unplug the drive now, so fully separated, 
and the footage is still accessible. So they're there, they're in the project. So I believe that the verbiage was, you can't edit off of a drive, meaning have like a four terabyte drive and then have like a 500 gig or whatever, 64 gig iPad and not run into issues. So it does need to import it into the actual project. I did just click this button because I didn't know what it was. And it looks like we have our, our little tool here. This is what I was interested in. So it looks like we can move it wherever we want on the display if I tap on it. So this is the playhead. So if you're a lefty, you can switch it over. Oh, that's kind of nice. This very much mimics the physical speed editor that I have for DaVinci Resolve. If you go really slow, it's kind of fine scrubbing, which at first I was like, that's really slow. That's gonna be really annoying. But if you learn your flicks, it will uh, scroll pretty quickly through the timeline. I wonder, is it based on if I pinch out? My muscle memory, my like instinct is to still just like use a two finger scroll, or click across the top or knowing it's an iPad, just like it's much easier just to like tap on the part of the timeline that I want or use my finger. Like I'm trying to think if I'm, if my hands are on my keyboard and I need to move the playhead, am I gonna use the mouse? or it's, it feels like just tapping, just raising my hand to tap is gonna be the fastest. Reaching over here and opening this tool and going for the playhead, that doesn't seem that great, but it does seem like there's other tools in here. So if I, that's kinda of nice. You can set your in and out points using this tool as well. Scrubbing through here and I want that frame to be my in. Go further down, hit my out point. So I guess the way to do it would be have this wheel be just above there. So I go to this clip right here and I set my in and my out and then append is right down here. So yeah, so I guess there's an append button right there so you can quickly insert it. Okay, I, I could definitely see like that would be a nice way to pull selects. And uh, as someone who's been spoiled by the Resolve Speed Editor, I mean, it's something that's on the display so it's not another physical thing you need to buy or carry around with you. Um, that's a really cool implementation of a uh, scroll and jog wheel. All right, let's keep diving in at the top. So we imported footage. Ah, here's the new pro thing here. Give it all of our permissions. And uh, yeah, I'm still, I'm never going to film on an iPad. But when I think back to uh, when I first started, you know, you use what you got and if I got, say, an iPad Pro for Christmas or something as like a 14, 15 year old kid, this would be my dream machine. Are you kidding me? I can film in ProRes on the device. I can then edit it in Final Cut. Oh, everyone say goodbye to my Mac Pro. It's uh, finishing transferring stuff. Shipped off today, but say hello to the new 16 inch. You can put in custom white balance. That's nice. These are all things that should already be in the camera app. <laughs> Exposure controls flash, slow-mo, video, and then we have an audio meter. Left-hand side, audio, I guess you can connect a mic, record a clip here. We're in ProRes, we're, yay, look how cool, woohoo. So we stop recording, hit done. It shows us how many clips we have. So if I, if I do two clips, all right, so now we have two, I'll hit done. All right, and then obviously they go straight into the project, which is cool. All right, now here's where I think this is my most excited feature, this live drawing. So I tap on that, it brings up our normal pen tools that we'll see in notes and everything else. Draw, right? So maybe I just wanna do that. So if I hit done, we can see that adds this little live drawing thing. And if we find our inspector, oh, inspect in the bottom left-hand corner. So that's different than every other NLE out there. So it brings up on the left-hand side, so it animates it by default in the way that you draw it. Now if I set this to zero, it'll just be there the whole time. It'll just be stagnant. HDR level, sure. Blend mode, crop, transform, what sort of effects, mask and keying, color adjustments, stylize. It looks like you can add effects on top of it. That's really cool. That I am definitely going to be using that feature. While we have our inspect open, let's click on some of these clips. 
it looks like we have some very basic inspector tools. So we can see the format, clip speed, so we can adjust speed settings, opacity, blend modes, basic transform tools. All right, this looks like is what we have for color tools. So we have exposure adjustments, contrast, change our tints, midtone color. So it looks like no color wheels. We can add a, a basic shape mask. But very, very basic color tools. That I'm a little, a little sad about. Doesn't look like uh, we're having any sort of LUT support or anything like that, at least as far as I can tell currently. They do have voice isolation, which they did add, I think last year or a while back to the desktop Final Cut Pro, and apparently it's very, very good. Um, so I can turn that on, you can turn the amount on. That's really cool. Some basic audio effects, nothing too crazy here. That's our export button right there at the top middle. Over here we have our basically undo redo buttons. We have our kind of viewer only mode to give us some screen real estate. We have our project media and see media different types, keywords, favorited, some basic organizational tools. Here we have our effects, transitions, titles, backgrounds. This is all that downloadable content that you can change. We have some timeline options here for we can turn snapping. Clip edits in the primary store line will maintain project timing by overriding clips and creating gaps. On the bottom, let's see, we obviously have trash. We have, what is this? Oh, it's almost like ripple delete. Those are your cut tools at the bottom. Let's see, does the good old command B? Yeah, command B works. What about uh, our basic like ripple deletes, command shift left bracket? In the course, I'll go through shortcuts and stuff and what the limitations are. In terms of our viewer, we have our percentage, play pause, full screen, picture and picture. That's kind of cool, because you know what this means? This means if you hook up a secondary monitor, you can have your viewer be on another screen, and you can basically have dual monitor support. So you can save it as a project file. So you will be able to share Final Cut Pro for iPad project files with other Final Cut Pro for iPad users. Export video, current frame as a still, that's nice. Where is the send to Mac? All right, so it looks like there are questions to be answered here. This is, in a lot of ways, similar to NLE's DaVinci Resolve, the Final Cut Pro for Mac. Uh, but in a lot of ways, it's a very different style of editor. They've really reimagined the layout on a lot of different things. This is not a direct port from Final Cut Pro from the Mac. Is that a pro or a con? I'll leave that up to you and your personal preferences. You know, it's it's definitely a capable first go around at it. Uh, I still find it hard to view it as an extension of Final Cut for the Mac. Can't even easily find the send to Mac button. Unless I'm missing it somewhere, there, that button did exist in the promo video, we all saw it, but. So that was kind of my first impressions of Final Cut Pro for the iPad. What do you guys think about it? Uh, are you excited? Are you downloading it? Are you paying the monthly or yearly subscription? Uh, if you're interested, there's definitely gonna be a bit of a learning curve here. So I'm gonna dive super deep into it, learn everything there is to know about it, and then teach you guys. Uh, so if you wanna join that community over there, check out the links in the description. Uh, and for the next week or two, get 25% off. And uh, once the course is fully up and going, that will no longer work. And I will be giving away, again, three yearly licenses uh, to new members over there. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.